Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our presentation for our dorm orientation on orientation weekend. And uh, I'm Pastor Tony Hansen, and I'm going to be assisted by Ms. Becca Deering, uh, our dorm supervisor today, to tell you about uh, what to expect at the dorm and just some good uh, rules, regulations, street knowledge, and uh, how to be prepared for uh, what's going to be happening at the dorm. Uh, just a little bit of a disclaimer, um, everything that we're going to be talking to you about today is actually found in the dorm handbook and maybe a little bit into the student handbook. So if there's something that you have a question on, uh, we're going to encourage you to go back to the dorm handbook or the student handbook and read through it even closer. And if you have questions about it even still further, uh, don't be afraid to give any of us, the dorm staff or myself, uh, a phone call or an email. And all those emails and phone numbers are at the very end of this uh, presentation. So uh, what I'd like to do is you're going to follow along with some slides with us. And uh, we're going to just walk you through this. And may God bless uh, our presentation and your listening of this. And and uh, we look forward to having you come to uh, Great Plains and and uh, have your kids be here. So uh, it's a great privilege to be able to serve them. Our theme this year is Build on the Rock. Uh, it's one in which we use Matthew chapter 7, uh, verses 24 and 25 as the theme. And it's the thought of, again, uh, building on Jesus. Uh, whether it be our schoolwork or our dorm life, uh, we build our life on Jesus. It's God's people. It's, there's no other better place to go. So, uh, again, with, with all that thought in mind, um, as, as people united in Christ, uh, we get to live together in a dorm and uh, enjoy uh, what God's given to us uh, to, to have a great place for our students to live. Uh, this year's dorm is uh, full, in a sense, uh, fuller than it was last year. Uh, this year we have 63 dorm residents. Uh, 56 of them are from uh, the states, or you can say are domestic, and seven of them are international. Uh, every one of our students is a blessing to us, and we're very thankful for the fact that uh, you're choosing to have uh, your students, your children live with us here at school. Our dorm supervisors uh, are listed and pictured below. Uh, Carla Klug is our dorm manager, you could say, and Ms. Becca Deering and Mr. Michael Starr are our dorm supervisors. Uh, they're graduates from MLC, and uh, they get assigned to our, our dormitory for two year stints. And uh, they're here. Uh, Ms. Deering is in her second year and Mr. Starr is in his first year. And uh, we're very thankful for these uh, blue chippers that God sends to us to take care of our dorm and to work together with Carla Clue. Uh, we do have resident assistants or better known as RAs. Uh, they get to help take care of some things going on in the dorm, uh, kind of a, to a lesser extent, but still very important to us. Um, they are the uh, our eyes and ears and the wings. Uh, so we have three boys and three girls. There's at least one RA in each wing. And uh, what they get to do is assist, uh, such as with uh, uh, study halls and bed checks and checking for phones and things like that, uh, as well as other things, kind of planning stuff uh, for the weekends. And we'll get more into that later on. But uh, they are, uh, again, uh, students who uh, have been around the block. Uh, they're seniors, uh, mature, responsible young men and women to uh, help take care of things in the dorm. At this time, I'm going to give the uh, the, the camera or the, the floor over to Ms. Deering and she can tell you about what uh, our dorm has to offer. Hi, as Pastor Hansen said, I am Mr. Rebecca Deering. I am in my second year being a dorm supervisor here at GPL, and I really love it. It's a lot of fun. It's fun hanging out with your kids and getting to know them on a different level than just in the classroom. I also like getting to know them in the classroom, but I don't have all of them, so it's fun. Um, so yes, as this slide says, uh, we try to make our dorm as much of a home away from home as we can. We understand that it's not gonna be home for your kids. We try and make it as comfortable as possible. As it says, each room provides Plenty of room for two roommates. I was blown away when I got here um, at our dorms and I am 
constantly blown away by just the blessings that God has given us in our dormitory. So each room has bunk beds, every individual has dressers and a closet, and then each student also has a desk and a chair. Um, they also have sink, bathroom, shower. It is the expectation as it is their home, away from home, to take some responsibility for their rooms and to keep them clean. We as dorm staff go through and do regular checks to make sure that everything is clean and neat and tidy. So that is something that we work on. Um, we also, as you can see, there are guides and rules in the handbook. It's a great place to look if you're not sure where things are, what things are supposed to be like. And we also have decor listed on this. The big thing, um, we'd like you to check over in the handbook what is allowed to use to hang things up in their dorm. Um, we don't like them using thumbtacks or even command strips are a little iffy sometimes because students don't always know how to use them correctly and it causes damage to the walls. Um, if there is damage caused, you all put a $50 dormitory deposit down and that will cost cover the cost of fixing that. But if there is a cost more than that, you will be contacted about covering the cost of those repairs. So it would be better if you just tell your students to make sure they take care of things and follow the guidelines and then no one has to worry about that and it makes everyone's life easier. Also, just a reminder that um, there's a $35 fee for refrigerators and gaming systems in the dorm per semester, correct? Yes, per semester. So just keep that in mind as your student is talking about bringing those. I know a lot of students will split the cost between them and their roommate, so that would be a good thing for them to talk about. And then moving on to dress and appearance, Pastor Hanson and I are going to kind of split this. I'm just going to kind of move over here. Yep. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, <laughs> So what we'd like to talk about is um, the dress and appearance. Uh, something that we remember as being God's people is, again, we want to do everything in the most uh, appropriate way. Uh, the book of Philippians tells us to do things in the most excellent way. Um, admirable, uh, loving, uh, thoughtful, caring. And that's, again, who we are. So uh, obviously at school, we want our students to dress appropriately and please follow the guidelines that are in the student handbook. But in the dorm handbook, there's also this section. Uh, this section talks about dress and appearance. And although it's not, maybe you could say as tight as it is at school, uh, it's still um, a place where we have lots of varying maturity and, uh, and attitudes about how things should be done. And uh, people are different parts in their life. They've grown up differently. So uh, with, you know, 65 or so people under the same roof, uh, we want to make sure things are done with you know, modesty and decency and a love for our Lord and for others. Uh, not giving anybody some way to, to, to think something that they shouldn't or see things that they shouldn't and uh, give anybody uh, a chance to, um, I guess, you know, sin in, in, in their mind or in their hearts. So, again, we want to uh, not lead anybody astray or give offense. So uh, we have a couple of things here. It talks about modesty, uh, dressing in a way that brings um, God glory, not unwarranted attention to ourselves. So just keep that in mind. Uh, we make this a, a kind of a general rule, um, not getting into specifics, but again, keeping in mind there's other people that, that see it's only the guests and visitors that will come in the dorm all the time. So we don't want to give anybody uh, any, uh, any reason to uh, be offended. Uh, we also want to be a witness, a uh, witness of who we are in Christ and then our appearance and pleasing to God. So, you know, what we wear, what our shirts say, what our, our, um, our dress says about ourselves, you know, what, what we wear uh, as far as tightness of clothes and, and um, everything else that goes along with that. Um, we're a witness of Christ. So uh, let's, as we prepare for living in the dorm, uh, again, although it's not like it's work clothes, uh, comfortable clothes, of course, we just want to make sure that uh, we're witnessing our faith in Christ. Ms. Deering can take these two. Yeah, so we also talk about appropriateness. So um, obviously students are gonna go off into the world and they won't be at GPL anymore once they graduate. And we wanna try and help them understand what is appropriate in the world and to help them make better decisions about what to wear um, in a job and in college and things like that. So that's kind of one of the reasons that we do this. And also orderliness, just having a dress code, while not always popular, I was 
a kid that didn't like a dress code in high school either, but it glorifies God and it provides decency and order in our school. We try and maintain a fairly professional environment. And that's what we keep in mind when we're going through dress code. Thanks, Ms. Deering. Mm -hmm. So we're going to move on to a few other things. And again, if you have questions about any of this, don't be afraid to, to call or ask. Um, but we're going to move on to this part, just some street knowledge. Um, I'll take the first couple of here, and then Ms. Deering will take the last few. Uh, but it comes to uh, absences and jobs. Uh, we understand life happens. And street knowledge, something that is good to know is it's okay. Life happens. We understand that. So being absent from school, such as for family gatherings or, or even, you know, when juniors and seniors get to that point for school visits and such, uh, it's okay to go. But uh, the street knowledge here is not only do we need to tell school what's going on and what our plans are, you know, well in advance, especially for visits and things or even some vacations. Um, there's some other things that are timely that we don't have a lot of time to, to share with in like a family crisis of some sort that we want our kids to be home for. But if, if at all possible, we want to make sure not only does school know about these things, uh, planned absences or just announcing to our principal and secretary that, hey, my kids are going to be gone um, or my child's going to be gone, but to tell the dorm. Uh, dorm staff needs to know this too. Although there's good communication between um, school and dorm, uh, don't want to assume that all of, all the time it's just done immediately as soon as we share that. So if you could share with school and with uh, the dorm that uh, perhaps your child is going to be late getting back uh, from a Sunday night or late after a, a vacation or um, you're going to be gone for you know a family gathering, um, yeah, please let let our, our dorm staff understand that and know that as well. Uh, next thing, as far as jobs are concerned, uh, it's, it's okay for our, our students to have jobs. Uh, around Watertown, the, the going age for uh, jobs is usually about 14 for a bare minimum job, but 16 for a better job. Uh, now, there are some criteria before this. Uh, before even jobs are applied for. And that's, again, something I direct your attention to in the student handbook. I should say the dorm handbook. Um, please take a look at that and note there's some some uh, uh, proper flow chart and how things should go. You should, again, talk to me, talk to the principal, talk to dorm staff, um, even talk to an advisor about a job. Uh, and then And then once everything there, such as grades are concerned and how they're doing in school is concerned. Uh, what well, if that's all given the thumbs up, uh, then by all means, we can say, by all means, go go apply for a job. And, uh, and, and then if God willing, that job is, is received and offered, um, then again, the, the point of it is dorm staff would need to know uh, the, the work schedules, and get those to our, you know, dorm staff, uh, Carla or uh, Miss Deering or Mr. Starr, so they can know when to expect uh, your student to be at work, and also uh, how the student plans to get to work. Uh, it's basically their responsibility, uh, your child, to, to get to and from their jobs. Uh, again, there's the that section in the dorm handbook that explains all that. So I'd encourage you to go there to check that out. And again, if you got questions, don't be afraid to ask. And I'll move on to uh, studies and study hall, internet availability and some perks. All right, so starting with studies and study hall, we do have a nightly study hall Mondays through Thursdays. That study hall is from 7.30 to 8.30. And on Sunday nights, it is from 9 to 10 to allow your students to get back to campus on time from being home for the weekend before they have that study time. We use our RAs during that time to help do checks and make sure everyone is focused and studying and quiet. Um, obviously, students usually have more than an hour of homework, so past that, it is on them to make sure that that is getting done. We as a dorm staff do kind of check up on students and make sure things are getting done, and if they're not, we talk to them and encourage them to manage their time wisely to get those things done. Um, if you have any concerns about that at all, just let us know, that's what we're here for. Um, internet availability, we do have internet available both for students' cell phones and also their computers. Um, the internet that is available on their cell phones turns off at 10 p.m. and the internet on their computers turns off at midnight to allow if there are 
points when, say, students were gone for a basketball game and they don't get back until 1030 and they saw homework that they need to finish that two hour time allows them. Obviously, we don't want them to be up that late, but it does allow for special circumstances if they were need to get homework done. We are working on some updates on the Wi-Fi in the dorm and hopefully that will be coming very soon and we will keep your students updated on that. If they have any questions about internet availability issues, things like that, um, Mr. Starr or I would probably be your best points of contact and then we can always get in contact with the tech people that know more than we do. Um, and lastly, PERS. PERS is the opportunity for students to not to be in that study hall that I just talked about. Um, it is based off of their GPA. So the better GPA they have, the more PERS they get. And also it depends on what year in our school they are. So obviously freshmen have the least amount because we're trying to teach them good study habits. And as they get older, we try and give them the opportunity to make those decisions for themselves. PERS can also be lost for different things. Um, not keeping their room clean, being out of bed when they're supposed to be, things like that, um, not doing their duty in the dorm. These are all things that can lose their purse for them. And those are just an opportunity for our students to go do things if they so please and so choose. The one thing that they do not have to take a purse for, even though they might be missing a study hall, would be a GPL sporting event or other GPL sanctioned event. Obviously, we're not going to um, penalize them for trying to be involved in their school. We want that as much as we possibly can. That's your answer. So just a couple quick notes on that. I just want to re-emphasize a couple things that Ms. Deering was talking about too. As far as study halls are concerned, um, again, that's why you're sending your, st your students here to, to study and learn. So yeah, we take that very seriously. Uh, just just a couple also street knowledge items. Seniors only have study hall for the first quarter. And then from second quarter on, we're helping them prepare for college. So they're uh, learning on their own, although they can always be back in study hall if they need to be. And then also freshmen um, are going to be in study hall the entire first quarter, uh, even if there is an away game. Um, but they can come to the home games and and uh, enjoy home volleyball and and things of that and such. So those are all important things to remember. Good old street knowledge, as well as moving on now to the health. Um, you see on the on the top of our health page here, and this has to do with if, what if uh, one of my my children or what if my child gets sick? Uh, first thing is we're family. We look out for each other and we want to take care of each other. So I'm going to preface this right away. Uh, we've learned a lot from COVID. Um, COVID helped us to be healthier. And uh, so while at school, and I, I would refer you back to uh, Mr. Bauer's email that he sent out about our policy in COVID, um, just, just a reminder, it's still no shame if, if uh, your children want to wear a mask if they don't feel well. Matter of fact, we'd encourage it, especially so we don't pass germs and things like that, uh, to wear the mask, but it's not mandated. But we did learn a lot. And uh, we did notice that this last year in the dorm, there weren't quite as many sore throats, um, not as much sickness uh, other than the COVIDs that we did get. Um, but again, we've just learned that uh, taking care of ourselves, keeping our rooms clean, you know, wearing masks if we didn't feel well, those are all important things to re be reminded of as we can encourage our kids down the road. Um, by no means are we going to ever poke fun or nor should anybody look down on the others for wearing a mask. We just, again, want to take care of each other as a big family in the dorm and, and help to uh, take care of each other's health. So the what if then. Um, you can see the first point there is what my child is sick, ill, not feeling well, sore throat, et cetera. First thing we'd encourage you to do is have your kids talk to Carla. Um, Ms. Deering and Mr. Starr are going to be busy getting ready to go over to school. Uh, Carla will be up in the kitchen getting things ready to go and uh, for breakfast and all. And so to, to let Carla know early in the morning, um, preferably by around 7 o'clock, that they don't feel well and, uh, you know, that they are going to be staying back in the dorm. Um, again, they can talk to Carla about that. What do you think? Um, erring on the positive side or the safe side, she'll probably tell them, why don't you get some rest and you'll see how you feel at chapel or at lunch and maybe go back. But uh, for the most part, it's talk to Carla because she will communicate then to uh, Karen Miller, our secretary down here at school, or Karen will call up 
Uh, one of those two will talk during the morning to find out, you know, if there's anybody sick or not making it to uh, to school today. So again, talking to Carla is the way to go, um, and uh, just talking to make sure that they're she knows that they're they're not feeling well. Um, but they're at school. Uh, your dorm students, your your children are at school. They need to talk to uh, me or Mr. Bauer uh, about not feeling well, and we'll check to make sure somebody's over at the dorm to uh, let them back over and get some rest. But proper channel for that is talk to Mr. Bauer and myself, and then we'll give the thumbs up or or just see if you know we can make it through the last couple of minutes of the day um, to get before we get back to the dorm and get some rest. Uh, but again, being considerate. Uh, keeping in mind that it's okay to, you know, to, to go back and rest and to, uh, you know, just if it's bad enough, you know, to, to go home, whether it's a case of COVID or, or something else that you feel you want your child to be home and we'll encourage, you know, if, if it's, you know, a, a long uh, process or really sick, yeah, maybe it's best to be home for, for that. Uh, again, just be considerate of, of the other you know, 60 so people in the dorm and, and uh, look out for their health as well. Uh, if there's a doctor's appointment that is needed, we work through something called Brown Clinic in Northridge. That's a kind of subdivision. Um, and that's something that uh, Carla will talk to you about and get a, uh, a an appointment set up according to how the schedules can work. And uh, she'll take care of that. But if you would like to um, pre-register your child in case you think, well, you know, my child always seems to get this this kind of a illness in the winter. It's always okay to call the number on your screen uh, or point of contact, POC. It, her name is Heather at Brown Clinic, and she will help you pre-register your children even now just to get your insurance cards over there, or your insurance numbers and, and things of that nature. Uh, her phone number is 605-884- Four three one four. You can tell her I sent you to her, and she's more than happy to help. Now we have a great uh, relationship with Brown Clinic, and they've been such a help, and we definitely appreciate that. But again, um, Carla will schedule the appointments. Uh, I'm sure in consult or at least in communication with you. Um, but again, she's the one that'll get them over to the actual clinic. And uh, with that said, we're going to move on to another point. The other point is um, prescription medications. Uh, prescription medications are very important to your children. And uh, just to be as safe as possible and to keep everybody as safe as possible so medications are taken uh, like they should be, uh, we're asking you and encouraging you and just saying we'd, we'd like to do this um, to let dorm staff know, primarily Carla again, our dorm manager, know that your child has some prescription medications. We will keep them in the kitchen. We'll keep them uh, safely tucked away. And as your child needs them, uh, dorm staff will make sure that they get them and taken in the way that they're supposed to. Uh, again, looking out for your child, looking out for others around. Uh, this is a uh, uh, more of a uh, official, uh, formal way that we're going this year to make sure that all medications are, are done in the very proper way and taken for the health of your children. So with that said, we're going to move on to dorm relationships. All right. So dorm relationships, we go everything based off of respect for God, each other, and self. That is just kind of the overarching theme that we use when we are discussing these things. Um, the first thing would be PDA. If your student gets into a relationship with another student, it would be great on our end if you could have a conversation with them about what is appropriate with those people. But also, I'm not afraid to go in and uh, make kids really uncomfortable. So if that's necessary, but it'd be great if you could just have those conversations with your students so that I don't have to. Um, but I am willing to. <laughs> um, also, student interaction. Overall, our student interaction in the dorm is fairly good. Even we've had football players back for a little bit now and um, watching the older ones take the younger ones under their wing, show them how things work, befriend them. We are a fairly small school and so it really becomes a family environment. We really focus on that at school and also in the dorm. That being said, any hazing or bullying is not tolerated at all in the dorm. If your student does tell you that that's happening, um, please let us know. We can only know so much, obviously. That's another reason for our RAs. They kind of keep an eye and ear out for that kind of stuff, and we try and put a stop to that as soon as possible because that is just not tolerated at all in the dorm. 
Also moving on to language, obviously students should be speaking in an appropriate manner as to not cause offense to anyone, respecting God, each other, and self in the dorm. Um, so that might be worth a conversation with your student as well about what things are appropriate. Um, obviously written and a big thing that has come up I think in the last few years is social media. Um, students need to be aware that those things can be very harmful to other students and also those things are permanently out there. So we, we talk about that with students a lot but it would just be a good reminder from you that everything that is put on social media, everything that is said, everything that is written to other students should be under that overarching of respect for God, each other, and self, and just never putting other people down. So, moving on. Thanks, Ms. Thierry. Um, so we talked about, you know, safety as far as health is concerned, relationships are concerned, and then just personal safety as a dorm as a whole is concerned. Um, I hope this doesn't, this screen doesn't uh, frighten you at all. Uh, it just is letting you know that um, we still live in a world where there are temptations. And what we see, uh, the very first thing is uh, the Watertown Police Department listing there. Um, yeah, uh, it's, I think it's fair to say, although we, we come to Great Plains and we know that this is a Christian environment, um, this is still a place where the devil works. So whether it be with, you know, the, the items that Ms. Deering talked about uh, just previously or schoolwork or other kinds of attitudes, um, even even in the world, our, our kids get um, exposed to, tempted by, see things such as illegal things, um, which for their age, again, can be, you know, cigarettes, it can be drinking, it can be vaping, it can be uh, illegal drugs and so um, so we do have a relationship with um, the police department and looking out for the well, better, the welfare and the benefit of everybody. Uh, they they work with us and and uh, come and, and visit, and they bring their 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 uh, canines with and their canine unit, and they will do some sniffing and some some looking around. And again, this is something that's in our dorm handbook for the search policy whether it be at school or a dorm or vehicles. Again, it's, it's not necessarily, it's not a witch hunt. It's just looking out for everybody's well-being and helping everybody safe. So uh, they do come around periodically. And uh, we as dorm staff also reserve the right to do that just to keep people safe in case there's something that we, we wonder about or have been made note of. Um, we'll, we'll do the best in Christian love to take care of everybody, and especially uh, in this, this realm. So, but again, the Watertown Police Department, uh, more than happy to come in. The kids love to see the dog, and they get to pet them when they're all done. Uh, but then, uh, again, we, we're very thankful that uh, we have that relationship and, and, uh, and how that all works out. Uh, we also look out for the safety and welfare with, with fire drills and tornado drills. Uh, those happen periodically, uh, being that we live where we live with tornado possibilities. The kids go through that at school and in the dorm, and uh, you never know how uh, uh, just a simple spark or an arc of some electricity can actually get a fire going. Uh, again, we definitely don't want that to um, affect our, our students, but again, with some good fire drills, um, we are very confident that uh, our kids would be able to get out of the dorm rather quickly, which again, just leads me to think also about looking back at the uh, dorm handbook about what's allowed in the room as far as extension cords and power strips. Please take a look at that uh, towards the beginning of the handbook. That brings us to fun stuff. Um, Ms. Deering's got a good handle on this, so she's gonna come and talk to you about that. This is the fun part of this presentation. So this is just some of the things um, that are available to students in the dorm as fun stuff on the weekends, things to do. Um, pumpkin carving was one that we did last year and it was super fun. We try and have movie nights every once in a while. Um, last year, because of COVID, we couldn't do as much Christmas decorating as we would have liked because students were sent home during that time period. But we're hoping to bring that back this year. Um, open gyms, ultimate frisbee. And then as you see on the right hand side of your screen, the wellness center is available to your students at a very discounted cost. They are very good to us about making that available to students. And we have quite a few that take 
very good advantage of that. There are disc golf courses around Watertown. Um, there is a library. It's great. I use it. I know that there are plenty of girls that like to make trips down there and boys as well. Um, but there's a group of girls that walk down there pretty regularly, and I'm sure they would love to have your student join. Um, student Council has really taken responsibility within the last few years of trying to plan fun things for our students to do, and they are hoping to continue that this year and have some really fun ideas for things that are coming up. And this is just a few of the things. If your student comes up with something, they're like, hey, I think this would be really fun. Have them talk to RAs, have them talk to dorm staff. We are always looking for things for your students to do and fun events for us to do in the dorm. Then moving on. Um, so the next thing would be just visitors and weekends home. So I'm going to talk about visitors and then Pastor Hanson will talk about weekends home. So obviously we welcome all GPL students um, into the dorm to stay overnight. The thing is they are going to do that. We do need permission from their parents um, and they have to follow all guidelines. If your student has another guest or visitor that would like to come visit them. Um, same thing, we'd need permission from their parents and we'd love to hear from you too. Um, just about that kind of stuff. It's just good for us to be over-informed rather than under-informed. And then just like it says, calling ahead, signing in and out, um, especially in the case of a tornado or a fire, we need to know who's all in the building as well as just for overall safety and stability in the dorm. It's good for us to know who else in the building and that kind of stuff. And then uh, moving on to the weekends, uh, considering we are a dorm, our dorm school and uh, we, we, we get to take care of your kids for uh, the, the week and maybe even weeks, we also understand that this is family and although we are school family, your family is even more important to your children. So we encourage you as the best we can. You know, if you can, if your child can come home on the weekend and spend time and grow up some more with you and to get uh, um, your take on things, because you're mom and dad, you're the first teachers and, you know, you're the first ones that get to take care of your students and make the most lasting uh, impressions and, and lessons given. Uh, we encourage you to have your kids come home. Um, of course, there's proper planning with all that. Uh, students need to allow the, the, the dorm staff to know on Wednesday night uh, when there's a sign-up sheet of whether they're going home or not, and that that's perfectly fine. We encourage our, our students to go home each and every weekend they possibly can. Uh, not that we don't want them here, but again, that, that great connection with family and with parents is, is huge. Um, which then again also brings around, what about if my child wants to bring a friend home? Uh, and maybe they're, they live a long distance away. Perfectly fine uh, with that whole idea. But again, dorm needs to know that. And with both sets of parents contacting the dorm first, uh, letting us know that Johnny wants to bring Billy uh, home, uh, that's, that's the best way it works. Uh, although we can find out sometimes last minute, which is okay, uh, we still need to know from you folks that uh, your son wants to bring a friend home or your daughter, Susie wants to bring Jane home and, um, and that that's perfectly fine. Uh, so, but that just needs to be uh, communicated. So please call dorm staff, call Carla, call Mr. Starr, call Ms. Steering, let them know, email us, uh, and that will be uh, even just as good. But uh, again, it's just something we need to know just so everybody is on the same page and nobody's caught by surprise or assume somebody went somewhere. Um, so that, that's, a, that's a good thing. Uh, my, my last point there of hosting also extends into uh, uh, vacations. We do have students that live a very long distance away, some even across some oceans. And if you are able and willing and would like to host some of these longer distance students, uh, by all means, please let me know. Um, I'm kind of the, the travel agent here to make sure all of our kids get to the proper destinations they can for like our long weekends. And there's about a long weekend almost every month where the dorm actually shuts down and um, our kids get to go home for a weekend. At that point, uh, the dorm ends and shuts down about one hour after the school day. Uh, or if there's an athletic event, about a half an hour to an hour after that event is is done and students are back. Um, and then the, the, everybody gets to go home. Our dorm staff gets to have a little bit of a break. And then uh, the, the, the students are welcome back at 4 p.m. 
on that day that they're allowed to get back into the dorm. And we really try to stress that 4 p.m. because dorm staff might be gone for a weekend or have other plans. Uh, if by some chance it, you need to get back to the dorm earlier, please call. Uh, we'll see if we can make some arrangements. But uh, for the most part, it's, it's uh, you know, 4 o'clock on the day they get to come back is when the dorm reopens. And uh, so that's an encouragement. But again, if you can host somebody, uh, whether it be one or maybe a couple students, we would welcome that. Please let me know. You can email me, you can call me. I prefer the email or or even a text, uh, but because that way I've got some record and copy of that. But uh, I'll get back to you just to confirm all those things. But that we'd love to be able to have you host. And we've had some families make some great connections and relationships with with uh, students who've come from Africa, from China, and other places, and they've made lifelong friends with that. So uh, it's a really awesome thing. So please consider hosting. It is a real joy in, in learning about who our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ are from other places around their country. And that brings us then to what really matters. Um, all of these things that we've talked about uh, all matter, um, but when it matters is our relationship with God. And as a, a Christian school, um, you know, confessional Lutheran school, we, we definitely want our kids to, to be in the word, uh, to be able to worship, to gather together, uh, to give praise to God. And, and on weekends, we get those opportunities. Of course, we have nightly devotions in the dorm. Um, we have chapel at school, but on weekends when we have the chance to go worship, um, we expect and we definitely want our students to go to church. So to the, West of Great Plains, we have two of our sister synod um, uh, churches. Uh, so we have St. Martin's Evangelical Lutheran Church and Bethlehem Evangelical Lutheran Church. And you can see the times listed there for their worship services. And you can see there's opportunities for Bible study and all. But again, we encourage and expect our students to go to worship. So if uh, a dorm student, though, is of a different denomination, by all means, um, they can certainly make arrangements and go worship at uh, that particular church. And we have no qualms about that. We're certainly uh, more than happy to see them go worship with their uh, with your denomination. Um, and if they can find rides, that would be great. But uh, also here we would encourage them if they can. We'd love to have them come over to St. Martin's or to go to Bethlehem and to worship. Uh, one thing we do ask, though, especially if they're going to go to Bible class at St. Martin's, um, yeah, there, there is brunch served at the dorm at a particular time every Sunday. Uh, so please take note of that, as it says in the dorm handbook. But just let the, the dorm staff know that they're going to plan to go to the early service in Bible study or to Bible study and then late service. And then uh, let them know and, and food will be held back and they'll be able to uh, enjoy that either before or they can enjoy it after they get back from, from services. And with that said, then. Um, yeah, thanks for taking the time uh, for, for watching this video and this ori dorm orientation video. Uh, please watch this with uh, your student and uh, watch it a couple times if you need to. Uh, you can fast forward, of course, and uh, get to the parts that you'd like to, to review. But uh, any questions and, that you might have or if you want answers for those, please contact one of us below on the screen, whether it be me or uh, Carla, uh, her email address is obscured there. It should be C Klug, so letter C for Carla, then Klug at gplhs.org. And you can see the other um, phone numbers and email uh, addresses there as well. But we're more than happy to uh, answer and help you out in, in anything that you've got questions about or, or uh, things that you just need answered. So I'd like to thank Ms. Deering for all of her time and appreciate uh, her time with us this morning. And may God bless you and grant us another awesome, great school year. And uh, with all that said, again, thanks and God's blessings.